uh, powered by a ground uh, computers, ground guidance computers, which were amazingly advanced for Russia at the time. They were all analog. And it was um, one-fifth, those three computers were combined were one-fifth the power of an IBM 360, which came along uh, very soon after in the 60s. The very next year, we had the first integrated circuit from Sputnik to the IC that Jack Kilby created at Texas Instruments. Now, um, Jack was a new employee, just graduated, I think, from uh, Texas A&M. And here, inspiration on his part was the lack of vacation days. Since he was a new employee, everybody else at TI had gone home for Thanksgiving vacation. He didn't have the vacation day, so he had to stay and worked in the lab and created the first integrated circuit because of that. He was honored with a uh, Nobel Peace Prize after his death. The very next year, the Soviet Union again stunned the world by putting the first man-made object on the moon with the Luna 2, using not much more computational power than the Sputnik had. Just an incredible achievement. On into the 60s was a decade of competition, the competition between the Soviet Union and the United States that really drove advancements in space. Yuri Gagarin, of course, orbited the Earth in 61, another incredible achievement for the Soviet Union. And he then um, invited us all into the cosmos. That same year, we had the first silicon IC chip by Robert Noyce, uh, Fairchild, in uh, Silicon Valley. Another, another huge achievement on the microelectronics side. In 1964, one of the traitorous eight, Gordon Moore, while at Fairchild, about to move to Intel, uh, published a paper called Moore's Law. And this is the path that we've been on ever since. For over 50 years, uh, Gordon Moore predicted that the number of transistors that we can put on a silicon IC will double every 18 months. Now, that's been modified to double every two years. It's still a phenomenal, absolutely incredible rate of progress. And you can view that either as number of transistors, uh, computing power on an IC, um, you can look at it as uh, cost, having the cost of the same IC, which are all important aspects of the semiconductor industry today. So the future, I think, is extremely bright. Uh, we're going to go where no one's gone before. We're going to continue all these advancements that we talked about this week. It's thanks to the space program and to technology. And together, we are better, and I'd like one call to action. I think you heard from Jill Tarter that the uh, SETI antenna arrays are now down for lack of funding. Incredible that we have that wonderful capability, and yet we're not able to run them because of lack of funding. So um, Karen Russell has developed a new program set called SETI Stars, where every one of us can participate. We, each one of us can uh, become a SETI star by donating whatever amount uh, you feel is worthwhile. Uh, to get those antennas back up and running is only $200,000. And then the um, operating amount is $220,000 a month after that. But for $200,000, we can get those antennas back up and running. This is a new program just introduced two days ago. So I urge everyone here, please go to SETIstars.org, take a look at it. And um, this is something that every one of us can do to, uh, to impact this effort. So thank you, spasibo, and gracias.